Hi, hi, hi. Hello, Samantha Paris. How are you? I'm good, darling. How are you? What is that? Golden State Warriors or something? Right. Repping for my team. All righty then. Steph Curry, baby. <clears throat> well, here we are again. I didn't guess before. So. Yeah, well, you're going to be even less likely to guess this time, but we'll get to that. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Inside Teacher Tips. Yes. Uh, so I have a very, very, very special guest. Like, super. Well, they're all special. True. It's true. This one has a little slightly bigger place in my heart. Just, oh. extra, just an extra slice. Extra. So Is that a hint? It is a hint. Hmm. You know what? Guess what, Samantha Paris? Because you've been so good at guessing, I'm not going to give you any clues. I'm just going to reveal. Well, I think I have missed one or two, but yeah, maybe, really? Maybe one, but I'm just, you know what? This guest is so special. I'm just going to reveal them, okay? You ready? Okay, super secret voice tracks guest director, reveal yourself. Hi, hi, hi! Oh, it's my turn! It's Samantha <laughs> Harris! My turn! No matter what clue I gave you, professional or personal, you would have guessed it. Yes! It's Samantha Paris! Oh my God, Samantha! We're so happy to have you on Inside Teacher <laughs> Tips. Oh my God, that is so lame. <laughs> I can't wait for my little nugget of wisdom today. <laughs> oh, Chuck, you are such a dorkopotamus. <laughs> We're putting you on the spot, Samantha Paris. You're gonna have to come up with a tip on the spot. Why? Because I've been teaching forever. I should just like. Well, you are the founder of Voice Tracks. I would think yeah. you have it a billion teacher tips up your sleeves. Hmm. Okay. Um. <laughs> well. Okay. First of all. All right. All right. Okay. Um. Let me put you guys on the spot first for a second here. So. So I'm gonna. Uh, Chuck, we've been together how long? 18 years, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So starting 18 years ago when you were a student wow. and you were a student for, you know, a few years for yeah. sure before your career went into superstardom and been working at voice tracks. So what is, is, what is, is there something that I taught you that always sticks in your head? Yes. There is. And in fact, I repeat it a lot in class and students have tried to quote me on it. And I'm like, no, you can't quote me on this because I get it directly from Samantha. Mm -hmm. And this is about how exposing your soul, your humanity, your vulnerability is, uh, is, is the surest way to draw somebody in. It's, it's, it's the hook. It's having, it's just having a little bit of your soul peeking through no matter what the copy is in front of you. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's usually um, what compels people to listen. Oh, yeah. I actually said that? That sounds you pretty did. good. <laughs> you did. Okay, well, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, Vic, have I ever said something that sticks in your head still? What do I say when I'm teaching that half of what I learned from teaching is from you and the other half is from Tom Pinto? And that I always say in my class, Samantha, as Samantha always says, and this has been rattling around my brain for the last two years and really helped me with my script analysis is what are the words telling you? Everything you need is in that script. For example, I have a, a narration script I use in one of my narration classes. And the first line is, okay, here's what we know. The fact that a narration script starts with the word, okay, that tells you it's more casual and less formal. Right. What are the words? And you know, there's a very, I say, the copywriter used this word specifically. Sorry, that was my phone. Oh my God, I'm in trouble. But anyway. Probably, probably your agent with a big book. And I, and of course I put them on hold for you. Right, um, of course. Uh, but what are the words telling you? Everything you need to know is in the script. This word was picked specifically. Why? It helps you get into the head of the copywriter, which helps you get the script, which helps you get the job. Right. Hmm. Pretty good. Yeah. You're pretty good, Samantha Paris. Yeah. Stalling. I'm vampy. I'm trying. Well, um, uh, okay. So I, I think a, a little bit based on 
on, on what both of you are saying, um, I think even more, a little bit more specifically, Vicki, obviously, you know, one of my biggest passions, I guess, I mean, I love all teaching, all styles, et cetera, but, you know, more and more, I'm really focusing on um, helping people with their self-direction. So, um, well, I feel, is it, I, I just finished teaching a, a lab, as you know, on Saturday on it, and I actually have some notes because you guys put me in the spot. Let me just grab my 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 notes from my class on Saturday because it's right here. Okay. Um, just because this will help me a little bit. So I'm so self-directing. Um, okay, yeah. <clears throat> so I have a lot of tips for self-directing. So let's start at the beginning. Um, first, whenever you get a script, I mean, I know this because I used to do this. I know you guys used to do this. We as actors, we always want to please, right? So the minute we get the script, and and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, stay very specific right now to like commercials and and narration that kind of stuff. Um, the, the minute we get the script, we can't help but have our eyes immediately go down to the bottom of the page if that's where the specs are or the top of the page because we're people pleasers. We wanna please. So, okay, okay, what are the specs? Okay, so what do I need to be like, right? So you're focusing on the specs. Then you begin to read the words, the script out loud. And you're already trying to kind of rehearse within what the realm of the specs are. You haven't even read the copy yet but you're already people pleasing. It's like, oh, I, I hope I can fit into this, this little package that they want me to be, blah, blah. So you're quasi re rehearsing, you're reading it out loud. You have absolutely no idea what you're reading because when you read a piece of copy out loud, or even if it's like, you know, like quasi or what we call sub vocalizing, you know, at McDonald's, we went to the thing the other day, right? So whether you're sub vocalizing or actually reading it out loud, the words are going out. But what you need to do is read the copy to yourself to make sure the words go in, mm. all right? Mm. And, you know, depending on, on my day, we're all like this. You know, sometimes you'll, 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 you'll read something and, you know, you think you're reading it and all of a sudden you'll get like two pages you know, like I'll, I'll read something like a novel or something and I, I'll read a couple of pages and then I'll go, shoot, what the heck did I just read? Because my mind was elsewhere or whatever. No, you can't do that. You've got to read that script as many times as you need to, to make sure you understand all the words and that the words have gone in. And by the way, step two, when you are first reading the script, and again, I'm saying, ignore the specs you should not be reading that script as if you're an actor because again even if you read the piece of copy like you're an actor you can't help but already be worrying about how you're going to perform it and this is whether you're doing a, a, a monologue script you know commercial or, or narration or it's a dialogue um <clears throat> you don't want to read it as if you're performing it you want to read that script as if you had to direct it because the minute you're a director, every single thing on that piece of paper matters. The timing, the music, the sound effects, all the other characters that are on that piece of paper, they all matter equally. They have equal weight to a director. Whereas if you're a performer, you can't help but still put more of your attention, if not all of it, on your part. But if you would read that script as a director, then everything matters. You're going to see more in the copy. Um, what are the things that I have on my notes here? Ah, yes. I don't ever prepare for an audition in my booth. First of all, I'm incredibly old fashioned. I'm, I'm so into the environment. Trust me, guys. But when it comes to my voiceover career, print out my scripts because you just might want to make little notations on that piece of copy. Plus, I feel like there's a connection with this piece of paper on a copy stand. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a disconnect when you're reading it on your tablets. But 
if you disagree, you want to, you know, I mean, I hug trees all the time. I just don't do it when it comes to my voiceover copy. <laughs> but be that as it may, I don't ever rehearse in my booth. The booth is where the magic is made. So I'm going to sit at my desk. I'm going to read the copy. I'm going to make my choices, right? You've got to always come up with the who am I? Where am I? Who am I talking to? How do I feel? Why am I saying what I'm saying, right? What's my intention? You got to make all those choices at your desk. And then I will perform it and I'll perform it about 50% of the way just to make sure that like, oh yeah, that feels right. Like the choice is right. But I'm not going to give it a full on rehearsal at my desk. I want to save the magic for in the booth. So I'm going to rehearse it about 50% of the way. I want to make sure that I you know, get all the words down. I want to make sure that I'm in the pocket of the timing of it, et cetera. So now I'm prepared to go in the booth. Then I'm going to perform it. And because you're really prepared, you shouldn't need more than one, two, or three takes. Also, when you listen back, do not listen back looking at the words because there could be little words maybe that you've slurred a little here or there, run together a little bit. Um, you know, and, and maybe you're a little bit too fast in places. In other words, we're not all the words are actually 100% clear, but you'll think they're clear if you're following along with the copy right? Because your eyes are seeing the words. So your ear thinks it's hearing everything correctly. So I'm always listening back and just asking myself, do I hear this coming out of the radio? Do I hear this coming out of the TV? Is this what an actual, you know, like a typical car ad sounds like coming out of the TV or insurance ad or, or, or whatever. So um, so I was going to ask myself, is this how it come, is, you know, is this how it would sound to me on the radio or, 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 or the television? And then if it's all good and I'm happy with all of it, then I'm going to listen back again, kind of like proofreading to make sure I've gotten all the words in that I didn't, you know, forget a line or transpose something or, or, or whatever. So that is when I will follow along, um, with the script and when you're directing yourself will you guys please stop editing so much that's not the job you signed up for the job you signed up for was to become a voiceover performer yes editing is important yes you need to learn things like to quiet breaths or you know things like that i get it yes it's got to sound good before you you send it off but i mean chuck i use you as an example all, all, all the time um <clears throat> okay i'm fast forwarding because i'm so excited because you guys are sitting right here and i'm saying stop editing your performances guys look if you can't get through a 30 second or a 60 second piece of copy without screwing it up or if you can't get through it from beginning to end with your your character being consistent well, then you're not a consummate voiceover performer and your competition is going to eat you for lunch. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, if you're constantly editing, taking a little bit from this take and a little bit from this take and a little bit from this take, what are you going to do when you actually get hired for the job and you can't get through that 30 or 60 second piece of copy without goofing up? And so, yeah, check. This is when I always use you as an example. Guys, this guy, this gorgeous hunk of hunk of burning love that we're staring at here has got to be one of the most incredible editors our industry has ever seen. Like when we're doing people's demos, Chuck and I, if I'm not happy with a read, like a, a sentence, I mean, he will literally sometimes in a demo session, because that's where we're supposed to cheat, like lift, um, uh, um, um, syllables, or he'll take a consonant of a word or half a syllable and build the word to the way in which I really want to hear it. 
okay? Chuck's amazing. So he can edit in his sleep. Let me ask you, Chuck, how often do you edit when you do your auditions, your own auditions? Be uh, honest. I'd say, I'd say, I don't know, maybe one in seven, one in nine or something. If there's, if there's just a, something, something I really either don't have the time or just don't want to do again, you know, for, for, for a given, for a given evening, I may lean on that, but it's got to be a straight performance or otherwise what's the point. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <clears throat> so, yeah. So guys, you, you, you should be able, if you don't like a performance, okay, you got to do it again. It's that simple. You do it until you do it right now. Yeah. If it's three pages of narration, I get it. You know, of course, in my mind, they shouldn't be asking you to read three pages of, of narration for an audition, but I know sometimes they do. So in narration, if something is just hideously long, okay, I get it. But come on, if you can't get through 30 or 60 seconds from beginning to end and it being a flawless, beautiful performance, well, you're not ready to be a voice, a professional uh, voiceover performer, just saying. So, man. I guess I could keep going on and on. See, I started like thinking like, oh, well, let me at least, you guys threw me for a curve, let me at least have notes. And then it's like, rah, 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 rah. so that's enough, I, isn't it? I knew, I knew. <laughs> I knew once you got your bearings, it'd be like off to the races. Okay, so. The biggest surprise of all, it's you. <laughs> that was so funny, Chuck. Oh my gosh. All right, well, all right, everybody. So I hope my tip was helpful and- Okay, and I love you too very, very much. We love you too. You. And um, I guess everybody, see you around. Bye. Hugs and kisses. Bye. Bye.